Hey everyone, I'm here with Michaela Quinn today, and she is a VA and freelance coach uh, based here in Kansas City, which is where I am as well. So we met through um, a VA who had actually worked for me before, and uh, she turned me on to Michaela's work, and I just really, really love what she's doing and her reasoning behind everything. So I'm going to let you uh, do a little introduction and tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. So I'll try to keep it short. Um, but my <laughs> name is Michaela. Like she said, I'm based out of Kansas City. Um, my background is in education. I taught high school English for, um, just turning off my do not disturb, turn off. Um, <laughs> for four years. And I was one of those weird people who knew exactly what they wanted to be when they grew up. I knew I wanted to be a teacher. My mom was a teacher. I played school in our basement with my American Girl dolls from like first grade all the way, maybe to like sixth, seventh grade, kind of played a little later than most other kids. <laughs> um, and I went to college got my dream job right after college teaching actually at the same school my mom taught at too. And I really loved it. Um, really did loved my, like the school I was at. It was a smaller Catholic private school. So I had freedom to teach, um, what I wanted and like freedom to create my own curriculum from scratch. Like my first, um, year, brand new teacher, they were like, we want you to start our pre AP curriculum. Um, oh, that's Awesome. <laughs> There's no money and no resources, but go. True. <laughs> so I wasn't getting paid yet. And I just, that first summer, I was up at the school from like nine to two or three, teaching myself the textbooks, creating my curriculum, and just doing all that. And I, I really, truly did love it. Um, but that year, I had just gotten engaged. And so I was planning a wedding. So I had nothing else to do, really young college graduate, no money. <laughs> yep. it, it made perfect sense to just throw my life into this unpaid work <laughs> um, <laughs> until the paycheck came. And then second year teaching, we got married in September, got pregnant right away. Um, our, she, our daughter was born nine months and like three days after our wedding. Oh, wow. So, <laughs> yeah. And throughout like my pregnancy, I kind of started like looking into daycares and called up the fancy Montessori school that had the cameras and was like, okay, this is going to be the daycare I send my daughter to. Called, got the <laughs> monthly tuition um, number and was like, no one prepared me for how expensive daycare is. <laughs> right? Um, it's and bad. I had to, <laughs> yeah, I had to like awkwardly do that okay, well, I will call you back to schedule a tour knowing full well I'm not calling them back because the cost was three-fourths of my salary. Sure. Um, my like monthly take-home pay. So I was like, gosh. Anyways, long story short, I just got frustrated and kind of like angry about the situation and how expensive daycare was. And then I started to have those thoughts like, well, maybe I want to be at home with my daughter. Um and family and be a stay at home mom and started to have that conversation with my husband. And it was just basically a laugh, like not going to happen. Um, we need two incomes. Yep. So whatever, got daycare situated. Um, and then that was fine until she was born. And like, I was holding her and I couldn't go back. I just yeah. did not nothing prepares you for that. No, it, but I had to, like, yep. there was absolutely no way we could make it work. Um, cause not only did we get, just get married young, have a baby young. We also just bought a house that was at the very top of our budget <laughs> because I told my husband, I'm going to work. Of course. So, um, I started looking into different things, like different businesses that I could start and, um, you know, I, I tried making and selling hair bows because I, mm -hmm. I made her, her bows, um, while I was still teaching. So I, she was born in September, she was born in June. I went back to work in September and like, it was just a rough, I wanted to get out fast. Yeah. So tried the bows that didn't work. Tried making and selling cookies and cakes. Like groceries are expensive. Um, and this was pre pandemic, pre-inflation, and people don't want to pay 
a hundred dollars for a cake. And so I was just left with a mess and, um, my options were kind of looking pretty bleak, but I started telling anyone and everyone who would listen and ask like, Oh, how's work? Um, most people I would, I started being honest. Most people were like, Oh, you'll get used to it. But finally I told the right person and she said, you know what I'm doing? I'm getting started as this virtual assistant. I work for this um, ceramic shop out of New York city. And I do all of her back end, like scheduling and Mm -hmm. email inbox management. And like I place orders for different products and stuff. She was like, you could, you should look into that. Like you could do stuff like this too. And I was like, okay, tell me everything. (laughs) And so I, there was this job source board that she used called hiremymom.com to find her clients. I immediately signed up for a subscription and started, um, just applying to anything and everything that remotely looked interesting to me. And, or was like, "Mm, maybe I could do this. And I started that in January of 2016 didn't have my first client all the way until August of 2017. So my goal was to hopefully have something lined up by April when I had to sign my teaching contract and I didn't. Um, and so that was, that was really hard. And I was able to talk to the principal and talk to my husband and convince them both that I could go kind of like a hybrid part-time So Mm -hmm. I technically would be like three-fourths time where I just taught four sections instead of five, and I took no plan. And so we were able to work it out to where I taught um, like two and a half days a week. Yeah, that's nice they were flexible with you, though. Yes, yes. And um, so then that, that summer, I was like, this is my last year. I am not going back. And on my off days and in the early mornings of my school days, I uh, I started working. So that summer, that summer I kind of sat down and was like, what am I doing wrong? I haven't landed a client yet. And sort of realized that, well, you're sending the same copy paste um, message to everyone. So no one's really connecting with it. And so I started really um, working on a few things and then... August of, that would have been 2016, just went back to school. I landed my very first client from there, kind of added on a couple rather quickly. And then by October, I was like, okay, I just need a coast for a few months because I'm going to get a little bit too overwhelmed Um, and I'm just going to settle. And then by, uh, I was at this time, I was pregnant with baby number two. Um. And then when he was born, when I went on maternity leave in April of 2017, um, I had tripled my teacher take-home income and I was only working 15 hours a week. And so the choice to go back was, was or to not go back and put in, not renew my contract. That was a no brainer. Um, So that was my last year teaching and kind of, this whole time that I was building my freelance business and trying to find something else to do, um, I got known in this local Kansas city moms group. Oh, mamas. I don't know if you're familiar with that group or not. No, there was, um, a mom in that group posting like, what can I do? I want to work from home. I want to quit my job, but we need my income. (laughs) And I don't really want to join a MLM. And so I just started telling them as I, as I was going like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. Like, here's some resources. And so people, as I was building my business, so I hadn't really done much yet at this point. And then I became known as the lady who can help you work from home without joining an MLM. (laughs) So I was just getting tagged one day in August. So after I had quit my job one day in August of 2017, it blew up. There was one post every like 30, 50 women were asking me to help them one-on-one. And I was like, Whoa guys, like, I can't do this. I have clients. I have kids. So I started a Facebook group, put everyone in that Facebook group and started um, just helping them all together. And that quickly transformed into my first ever course in September of 2017. And since then, I've solely been focused on helping other moms get started freelancing, kind of find their skill set, 
leverage that to launch a business where they really truly can work less hours and make the same um, and then grow from there. It's, it's really incredible what, what can happen um, when you're self-employed and kind of take control Mm -hmm. of what you charge and, um, and the growth potential there, like I said, is just incredible. So sorry, that was a really long introduction. No, that's okay. Because it kind of summed a lot of things up and, um, um, So basically you had to kind of learn everything trial by fire, basically how to charge and how to use all the softwares and how to manage everything. How did you, how did you handle that? (laughs) I, I mean, I kind of just let the clients take charge over this is what we're charging in the beginning because like I didn't really realize that I was starting a self-employed business. Thomas Jones, the clients kind of take the lead. And so in doing that, I realized I was severely undercharging. They were like, we're going to pay you $20 an hour. And I was like, okay, that sounds great. And (laughs) so it was so much trial by error, but it wasn't until um, trial and error. It wasn't until my first client gave me this job to go into all of these Facebook groups and kind of um, scope them out, see what they're doing that gets like engagement and to put together a plan for her group for how I can help her grow an engaged group for her business. And um, one of the groups she gave me to go and kind of stalk was Boss Moms, where you met Brenna. Yeah. Yep. And um, so in that, I kept seeing all these people being like, I'm looking for a social media manager. I'm looking for a virtual assistant. And just kind of opened my eyes to all of the potential out there and, you know, kind of started diving into different resources um, from others. There was a gal named Julie Stoyan. Um, She now goes by the name Julie Chanel, I think. Um, But she had a program called Create Your Laptop Life back then. And so I enrolled in that around Christmas time um, before I quit my job to she was going to teach, she taught like higher level skills, like digital marketing. And so I learned all of that to start pivoting my business from virtual assistant into doing like marketing for um, clients. Cause you can, you can charge a lot more. And I found that I really, truly loved that creative um, mm-hmm. marketing side of things. Sure. And so learned more about how to establish myself as a business owner um, through her. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome that you found her Mm because I mean, back then there wasn't a whole lot of information out about VA or freelance besides Fiverr. That was about it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And like, and I had, I had no idea. Like truly when I landed that first client, I thought I like struck gold and she was only paying me $20 an hour. And I was like, this is amazing. (laughs) Yes. Um, and I don't think a lot of people struggle with realizing how many options there are and what all VA and freelancers can do. And Mm -hmm. I know I've seen everything from like organize my email and G suite, you know, Dropbox kind of things to create these social media images and everything in between building funnels and websites and all sorts of stuff. And I've built websites and done a lot of SEO for people myself, but Mm -hmm. as far as the other stuff goes, like, can you speak to what all, you know, some of the options that are out there, especially ones that maybe people haven't heard so much about? Yeah, absolutely. So When we're talking about freelancing, that's kind of the umbrella term that basically just describes how the work is done. It's done on a freelance or contract basis, so you're not an employee. Um, And in that, uh, it's very much a business-to-business service that you would provide. Um, And the types of services that fall under that freelance umbrella would be like virtual assistants, social media manager, bookkeeper, copywriter, Um, which copywriter just is like writing content um, Mm -hmm. or sales type copy, um, anything written for a business, graphic design work, um, tech work, like you mentioned, funnels, um, PR, podcast editing, Pinterest management. Trying to think, is there anything that I'm 
online business management. There's just so many different things that businesses need um, to to run and operate. And those service there's so there's lots of different services that you could offer. Um, some of the specific ones are more specialized, but then the role that you mentioned first, virtual assistant. That's kind of a unique role and a great role for people starting out because it is so broad, um, which can be intimidating to some people. But a virtual assistant at the most basic level is just an extra pair of hands. Like you're there to help the clients out with whatever needs done. And it's going to look different, most likely for each individual client, what their needs are, where their business is at, what their business is. And so depending on, it's going to be the client's job to tell you, okay, these are the things I need you to do daily, weekly, monthly. Whereas when you're getting started as a social media manager or something else more specialized as that service provider, it's your job to bring to the client, okay, this is what we're going to do. Yeah. And so that's why the virtual assistant role is such a great place to start because you really just have to be willing to give someone your time get paid for that time and then check things off a to-do list. And so some of the typical things that will get outsourced to a virtual assistant, email inbox management, which is basically responding to emails, handling customer inquiries, customer service requests, um, deleting spam, (laughs) scheduling like any meetings, managing that for the client, creating graphics for social media sometimes, scheduling social media posts sometimes, sometimes repurposing content if clients have a podcast or a blog, if they create that anchor content and then they you know, want to promote it or use that to create their content on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, whatever, that's something a virtual assistant can help with. Um, I did a lot of taking just like Google Docs and, or Word Docs back then, and (laughs) turned them into like a pretty PDF in Canva. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Creating slide decks. Yeah. Creating slide decks in Canva for clients for their teaching. A lot of my clients had online courses and I'm trying to think what else. Um, Some, some virtual assistants will assist with video editing, podcast editing, data entry, like recording um, key performance and metrics for clients. And again, all of these things, if you're like, whoa, this sounds like a lot, this sounds way over my head. The great thing about the virtual assistant role is lots of people are willing to hire beginners because it's a beginner is going to be a lower hourly rate than a someone who's an expert. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are knowing that they know they're going to have to provide that training. They're going to be walking you through how to do the things they want done for their business. A lot of people will do this utilizing ClickUp and having standard operating procedures in place. Um, The very organized businesses and the businesses, the owners that have outsourced before and and know that. The clients that maybe haven't done that before, um, they, they still should know, okay, I'm hiring a beginner. I'm going to have to walk them through this. We can do it on calls. My clients would send Loom videos of how to do specific tasks the first time they they um, assigned me something. And other than that, there's a ton of online free resources, free tools to learn how to do some of these things. Like every software a client uses or a business owner uses is going to have free tutorials, free trainings out there because that software yeah. company wants people to know how to use it because if people don't know how to use it they're not going to have subscribers if they don't have subscribers they don't have a business sure sure um and I'm so glad you mentioned mentioned um OBMs because Uh I didn't realize that was a thing so whenever Uh I met Brenna I was just looking for someone to help me out with some social media stuff Uh and I don't remember what we were talking about or what she sent me, but it said OBM. And I was like, what is an OBM? Like, I've never heard of this. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit about that versus like a VA, I guess? Because VA, yes, absolutely. more people know of that one. Yeah, um, absolutely. So virtual assistant is going to be like the doer, 
the task, um, task getter dunner. <laughs> I love it. For lack of a better <laughs> phrase, the online business manager is going to be kind of that, that manager. They're going to be the overseer. Um, a lot of times they'll be kind of that right hand to the business owner. If we think about a traditional business structure where there's the, the CEO, a lot of times mm-hmm. in like online business, that tends to be the owner or the founder. And then um, that person brings the ideas, brings the visions. They're like, I want to do this. <laughs> well, a lot of the, those types of business people or those people in general, myself included, we lack in the follow through. Or we get too overwhelmed with all of the other things that needs to be done. And so there's this amazing role that we hire called online business manager, sometimes also referred to as director of operations or digital business manager. But it's essentially just that COO type person, that right hand person to help um, oversee the, um, like the overall strategy for the business, help look at and manage different systems and processes, refine those, strengthen those. Um, They'll implement and oversee any hiring for the business typically, as well as team management ongoing. So for example, I'm a small online course creator. I think at this point in time, I work with anywhere from eight to 10 contractors Mm -hmm. um, to help me run my business on a monthly basis. And If I didn't have McKinsey, who serves as the director of operations for my business or online business manager for my business, all I would be doing would be checking in with people and um, saying, hey, do you have this done? Hey, how's this? Hey, how's this? She takes away all of that off my plate so that I can focus on what I need to do to grow Mm -hmm. my business, which at this point mostly is being the face and um, supporting my students and creating content. Um, and then the other thing that they help out with is project management. So anytime I'm like, Ooh, can we do this? Or should we do this? She's going to first make sure it aligns with my vision. It aligns with the strategy. And then if it does kind of put together that plan of this is what we need to do. These are the phases and then delegates and outsource outsources, everything that needs to be done there. Awesome. Yeah. I was, completely blown away because I wasn't expecting any of that. And mm-hmm. whenever um, whenever I signed on with Brenna, who was a student of yours, um, mm-hmm. she sent me like all this stuff. And then we had she sent me a Trello board that had all this stuff already plugged in. And I was like, whoa, this is amazing. Like yeah. <laughs> This is so much more than what I was anticipating. Mm-hmm. So it, yeah, it really you really can make a difference whenever Mm -hmm. I'm like you, I'm more creative and I have really big ideas and Mm -hmm. know how to do them, but actually doing them is a problem. (laughs) Yes. Yes. So yeah, that, that is huge. Um, and let's see, I was going to ask, um, oh, so, okay. Now that we've talked a little bit about like options and different types of things that you can do, um, what are your like top three tips, would you say, for someone who is looking to get into this type of work? Yeah. So there's going to be kind of two parts to this. First, you really have to have um, like there's a mental and logistical side. Yeah. First, you really have to kind of understand that it is not easy to build your business, but if this is a priority to you, there's a couple things that you can do to kind of set yourself up for success so that you will stick with this through um, when the going gets tough. And then there's the logistical side of things. So for the the like mental, emotional side of things, um, first thing is to kind of I figure out why are you doing this? And like, what what does this mean for you? Um, why is this important to you? And because this is going to be the thing that when it gets tough, when, you know, you get rejected or um, maybe like me, it's you've been putting yourself out there for six, seven, eight months and haven't landed a client. It's going to be that one thing that keeps you pushing forward, um, keeps you persevering on. 
And for me, that was just kind of identifying the life that I wanted to live, what I wanted that to look like and having that be kind of the forefront of my, in my mind, um, on those days where I was like, I'm just, this isn't working for me. Um, Mm -hmm. that kept me, kept me moving forward. So kind of figure out why it is that you're doing this and what that's going to mean for you and your family when it works out. Not if, but when. Yeah. I love that you started with the like emotional component because a lot of people miss that part and, uh you know, it's not talked about as much and it, it can be overwhelming and just a lot to be turned down and not know what you're doing. And especially you know, we're talking to a lot of healthcare providers right now and Mm -hmm. they're switching careers or doing a side hustle. And so there's a a stigma, if you will, about that, about like not doing what you went to school for, which I'm Mm -hmm. sure you can relate with teaching, you Mm -hmm. know, and it's kind of like, well, why did you even, why did you even do that if you're not doing it now? Or you feel guilty for not helping the patients or kids in your case that you were teaching. So it's, it's, a lot of mental load. It is. It, and I think it's probably teachers um, and, and those in the healthcare, though, like when you're in a very service oriented career, yeah. it's, you have, like, I don't know what it is, but it, you're kind of just beat down to like give, 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 give. And I think that can kind of play into that, that guilt. Um, Absolutely. But I think, if you're wanting to make a change um, or like what currently you have going on in your schedule is not working out with you and your family in mind, uh, it's okay that you come first, your family comes first. And it's okay to take the steps necessary to, to kind of get in a better situation. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to the logistical side of tips to get started, I would say first things first, you need to kind of identify how much time you have to devote to this each week. Um, Look at your current schedule, current calendar, your current day-to-day, and um, just do a, a quick brain dump from like when you wake up to when you go to bed. What are you typically doing on a day-to-day basis, Monday through Sunday. Like, what are you typically doing in an ideal week? And then look at that and see, okay, when could I add in working on my business? Where, like, what can I get rid of? What can I take away to add time to work on my business? Especially if you're still working full-time outside of the home, it's going to be, it's going to be kind of a challenge to fit in that time. But for me, what I did, I did have those part-time days, Mm -hmm. um, as I was building, but I also worked on my, the days that I did work. So basically my work schedule was, um, I would, I started forcing myself to wake up from 5.00 AM to 7.00 AM again. And I was not a morning person, but knowing my why, knowing what was going to happen once this worked out was all I needed to be a morning person for a few, uh, a few short, short months. Um, so I could work seven, five to seven Monday through Friday. That's 10 hours a week, which yeah, is a is. lot. Um, and then I could work on my stay at home days from one to three. When my daughter napped, there's four hours right there. Um, and then I could work seven to nine on my other days, like my full-time days in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And so that Monday through Friday or three days a week, that would be two hours times three, six. So really there is about 20 hours I could work a week. And that's not, and that wasn't like filling every waking minute of my days and weeks Mm -hmm. devoted to either working my full-time job or, um, growing, starting my business. And that was keeping your weekends too. That was keeping my weekends too. And I used the weekends as kind of my flex time. Like if Mm -hmm. I didn't want to work evenings one night, 
Mm-hmm. Um, or if nap time didn't happen one day, I did have <laughs> time I could set aside on the weekends. It's it's my choice, yeah. right? And so when you do that, you find out how much time you do have. Then you can take that by your ideal starting at hourly rate. Um, for a lot of like virtual assistants getting started, I would say ideal starting hourly rate is anywhere from $25 to $35 an hour. Okay. That was um, my next question. So thank you. <laughs> yeah. So 20, let's just do 20 times 25 um, on the very low end. That would be 500, an extra $500 a week times, um, times four, let's just go with four for roughly four weeks in a month. That is an extra $2,000 a month. Mm -hmm. Um, now if that is not, if you're like, Ooh, Michaela, I need a little bit more than $2,000 to quit my job. Um, what you can do is if you're building on the side, save everything you're making in your freelance business as you're getting started in a nest egg. And um, as you start making income, build up that nest egg so that when you do become booked out of the time you have available, like let's say if it is that that 20 hours, um, but let's say maybe you need $4,000 to quit your job. Um, there, there will be a time where like you hit that wall where you aren't there yet, but you can't take on any more clients yet because you don't have any more time. So what you can do at that point is if you have that nest egg of maybe three months, six months, whatever you're comfortable with built up and saved up, you can then kind of confidently make that decision to quit your job, put in your two weeks, Mm -hmm. knowing that you're now going to have more time to, um, devote to your business, more time to take on new clients. And if it doesn't happen as fast as, you know, in a month, you have that savings to be that cushion for you in that ramp up stage. That's a really smart idea. I really like that. Yeah. Because I know so that's, if you, yeah, that's a big problem for a lot of people I know. So yeah. yeah. And um, keep in mind though, too, like you're, you're starting your business. You could charge 25 for your first client and then bump it up to 30 for your next and then 35 for your next. Or what a lot of people do who get started in the virtual assistant role is they'll get started there, maybe stay there for three months or maybe a little bit more. But kind of around the three month mark, people start to see, ooh, this is what I love doing. I love doing like this specific thing for clients. Like for me, that was the marketing, the social media side of things. At that point, I started specializing and just focusing in on doing social media. And so where, whereas like virtual assistant, I was saying 25 to 35, well, as a social media manager, I was able to start, um, I, I moved away. Sorry. Pricing can be a little bit, uh, there's a lot of moving Yeah, Yeah, there's a lot of moving pieces to it. And once you start doing a more specialized service, you're most likely not going to be charging hourly anymore. You'll charge by the package. You still need to have an idea of your hourly rate though, because that'll help you create your package price. But when I moved to social media management, I was creating my my packages um, off the ideal hourly rate of around $50 an hour. So I essentially doubled what I was making per hour um, when I, when I made that transition. And so that's where you see a lot of people who are able to meet bigger monthly income needs, um, Mm -hmm. working way less hours. Cause if I, you know, had a social media package that took me 20 hours a month to deliver on, um, times 50, maybe you're better at math than me. What'd you say? 15 times 50? 20 times 50. Okay. A thousand. Oh, 20 times 50. Yeah. A thousand. So a thousand, if I took four clients, I would be able to work 20 hours a week and make $4,000 a month. I like that math. So, okay. When we're looking at the logistical side, <laughs> you got to look at time Yeah. and um, how much time you have and kind of play with the numbers of, okay, what is my income goal? What do I need? based on hourly rates, like how much could I make? 
Um, and then as far as next steps and getting started, super important to figure out what service you're going to offer. Are you going to get started as a virtual assistant? Are you going to get started as a social media manager? There's no, there's no right or wrong there. Um, I have a skills assessment that can help um, people kind of go through and identify what their strengths are. Oh, that's and great. to kind of help match that with the service. If I, I can share that link with you, Allison, Perfect. and you can share that out. Um, but so next thing is identify the service you're going to offer as a freelancer. If you get if you get stuck here and you're overwhelmed, just go virtual assistant to start. Um, don't waste time being in indecisive mode for too long. The Been next thing, that. yeah, <laughs> the next thing you need to do is identify who would you want to work with. Who could you best help? as a virtual assistant, social media manager, whatever service you pick. Um, And from there, create a plan to put yourself in a position to connect with that person on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And um, different ways people go to connect with potential clients depending on who they are. For example, let's say I I work with a lot of people who um, like to work with the former teachers. A lot of former teachers like to work with TPT sellers. So TPT sellers, um, teachers pay teachers. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. I have heard of that. Yeah. Yeah. It's an online like marketplace where teachers can sell their resources similar to It's a really cool site. (laughs) <laughs> really cool. A lot of the teachers, there's a lot of sellers on there that are have quit their job and are making an amazing income from home doing this. They build teams. And so that tends to be a place where a lot of teachers like like to go. And so the TPT sellers hang out in Facebook groups. So then um, if that's kind of your ideal client, the um, teachers will go and network, answer questions in those Facebook groups where people are asking questions like, I'm trying to do this, I'm stuck, or um, I'm, I need someone to help me do X, Y, Z. Can Is this any of you or do you know of anyone? And then they can be like, hey, yeah, would love to help Michaela, blah, 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 um, go from there. Other people, real estate agents is a big, is another big niche where I have a lot of students who are interested in real estate, but maybe don't want to do the selling or maybe they sure. have in the past. So real estate agents hang out in like local business, um, local business networking opportunities. Like networking, so, yeah. yeah. So whether it's through, um, like the local chamber of commerce or just, you can kind of Google your city and, um, real estate events or real estate networking and find some of those to attend. Mm-hmm. Um, what's another example who clients like to work with? Um, a, another industry that we're seeing growing actually is the kind of like solo practitioners. So um, therapists, um, chiropractors, naturopathic doctors, like other small um Like cash-based independent practitioners. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Hiring freelancers, hiring virtual support to help with all of the back end, the insurance billing side of things, Mm -hmm. if applicable, um, scheduling, and any of the kind of like office management type stuff. Those business owners want to be with their patients. They want to work with their patients, yeah. but in doing that, there's this huge other side of things that has to happen in order for them to be able to serve their patients. Mm-hmm. And they might not have the budget for a full-time in-person receptionist or staff member um, for full-time or really even the need for someone full-time. So instead of just doing it all themselves, they can outsource to a freelance virtual assistant for five, 10 hours a week and have a really great option to get the support they need at um, something that fits their budget. And mm-hmm. a lot of times those types of clients prioritize asking for someone with medical background or medical experience. Yes. I um, just, 
Yeah, I learned about this whenever I had a coaching client actually a year ago, Mm -hmm. and she was referencing her VA and she was mentioning her like writing a blog post for her. Mm -hmm. And um, I kind of questioned her about that because I, you know, I didn't think of a VA having a healthcare background and writing a healthcare Mm -hmm. blog post was kind of a different beast. And she was like, oh, no, no, she's actually a physical therapist and she's at home with her kids. She does VA work for me like 10 Mm -hmm. to 20 hours a week. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Yep. <laughs> it's they, like, like such a great idea. Yeah. And, and so, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, so really, truly, whatever your passion or interest are or whatever your background is, you can support, cl- there's businesses in that industry, whether mm-hmm. it's fitness or um, like content creators on YouTube, podcasters, whatever, there is a business in that niche that need support and would love to work with someone like you. Yeah. Yeah. And I I have a coaching client right now who's looking for a VA and would prefer someone in the therapy realm because Mm -hmm. he's overrun with patient leads from some ads he's running and he literally doesn't have time to call all of them to schedule. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of at a bottleneck and would really prefer someone who knows that like cash based, um, you know, physical therapy world to be able to to talk to clients and patients about. So yeah, that's, yeah. it's really refreshing to hear that you can hire within your own niche even. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, now tell us a little bit about your program and what you offer in that. Cause I know some of the people might be very interested in that because, you know, going about doing all of this on your own without any, prior knowledge or any guidance is, is a little bit overwhelming. So <laughs> yes, absolutely. So you, I gave, I'll give you the skills assessment link. Um, okay. I also have a free crash course. If you're like, this sounds interesting. I don't know if I'm quite ready to jump into sure. a course yet. Um, I think you, mm-hmm. I can share that link with you too, Allison, as well, that you can give to people. It'll walk you through more just in depth of kind of like, okay, what is freelancing? Who hires? Why? how much you can earn, um, and then kind of how to get started. Mm -hmm. But essentially my program, my paid program, the Live Free Academy, um, is kind of built off the simple framework that to get started and land clients, you need a couple of things. First of all, you need a solid foundation for your business in place. Um, You know, looking at the legal side of things, identifying what service you want to offer, identifying who you want to work with, um, putting together a brand, um, for you to establish yourself as a business, creating your online presence. You don't need a website. You can get by in the beginning with a simple, um, online portfolio, and I can show you how to do that. Um, I walk you through the different routes to land clients and how to do that. Um, and then how to kind of identify the right strategy for you, um, what you're comfortable doing, and then the ideal client you want to work with. And then from there, so that's phase one is building kind of that solid foundation in place. Phase two is getting the, getting together the right strategy. And then phase three is um, implementing that strategy on a consistent, consistent basis. And so for that part of the program, I have created these monthly challenges where we have a new one every, that kicks off every month. And as long as you're through step five of the program, you can get started in that. And basically you just, um, in step five with this, your strategy of, okay, this is what I need to do daily, weekly, monthly, and then that go into the challenge and you just commit to doing that for 30 days. And we found in tracking this now since May of 2021. So over a year now that students who are at least 75% consistent, in that challenge and have that solid foundation, they're able to land anywhere from one to three clients within that 30 days. Oh, wow. And so that's kind of how the, the, um, program works. And then in addition to the course content of how to build your business, the challenges we, I do include skills training on how to do some of the top virtual assistant and freelance services. And um, there's a Facebook group for community support just for students. There's weekly coaching calls where you can get on with me um, on Wednesdays to get one-on-one support and feedback. 
Um, there's exclusive access to job leads for students and then ongoing guest expert um, trainings. Awesome. Awesome. That's yeah. really great to hear. I love that you have an area for skills training too, because I know that's mm-hmm. a little intimidating for some yeah. people, uh, especially if you haven't been working in online software, you know, a lot in, in your normal day to day. So yeah. Yeah. And the, the course content side of thing takes about 15 to 20 hours to go through. Okay. Um, to go through the training and then get everything implemented for each step that you need to build your business. And we provide templates, um, shortcuts, like tools for everything so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, Mm -hmm. There's templates for your packages. There's a pricing calculator if you have um, custom packages that you need to price. There's portfolio templates. There's like Mad Lib. I call them Mad Lib style, like portfolio starters to write the content for your portfolio. Nice. Um, Pitch templates. Because not everyone's a copywriter. (laughs) Contract templates. Yeah. Like, so I, I tried to make it like, here's what you need to do. Here's how to do it. And then here's tools to help supporting you so that you can just take, tweak, get started, um, landing clients as soon as possible. Awesome. Awesome. Cause that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, unless there's anything else you want to add, I think you've answered all of our questions and even some more stuff. So I really appreciate chatting with you today. Um, I definitely learned a few things and um, I'm looking forward to sharing all the links for your information. Yeah. I would just say, um, last thing I would add, the two hardest things about starting your business is number one, um, first that just initial choice that you're going to do this. Mm-hmm. And then two, that first time you put yourself out there, um, going through the course and kind of learning all the things that's, that, that can be easy or safe for people when it comes time to putting yourself out there. Um, that's where, pe- like, that's where, that's where it gets hard, but that's the only thing that is going to turn your like wishing, hoping, dreaming of starting a business into making it a reality everyone has doubts that kind of prevent them and hold them back from taking action and putting themselves out there. But if you can kind of, if you can kind of find it in, in yourself um, to take action, despite having doubts, despite the fear of rejection, despite the fear of what if I never land a client or what if I make a mistake or, you know, all of those, what ifs um, you can do it. So the, the hardest thing is, is overcoming your own inner, inner doubts, which mm-hmm. everyone has them in the beginning. Um, and even as you go, so don't let those hold you back. And that's refreshing to hear because we, we really all do have them. I know I've written Facebook posts and different things before and, and just, I've had to sit there with my finger, like right mm-hmm. on the the inner button. And I'm mm-hmm. like, okay, do I hit enter? Do I not hit enter? Do I not hit enter? Like, and I just close my eyes. Like, okay, just, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> I do that with reels. I'm like, oh God, I look like such a doofus in this, but you know, this is the game Instagram wants us to play now. Just yeah, I know. Send it, reels, shut it, uh, whatever. Yep. <laughs> Wait, and reels is another thing. Like, if you love that, you could specialize in just helping businesses with reels. And honestly, that would be an amazing niche to get into because especially mm-hmm. for healthcare providers, because A, we don't have time to make reels. B, we usually don't like being on camera. A lot of us are a little more introverted and a yeah. lot of us are a little more dry and analytical. <laughs> so it's very hard to get that personality to come mm-hmm. out. So that's that's actually a really great tip is, you know, mm-hmm. if you really like doing that and have that bubbly sense of humor and yeah. Yeah, that's, that's a really good idea. So thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, and if anyone has any questions, my DMs email um, are always open and I'm going to open awesome. I'll, I'll share your socials down below. Thank you. Yay, great. <laughs> thank you so much.